everybody so there was no video last week as you may have been able to tell and i'm going to be very honest with you about why there wasn't a video it's because the video i would have released last week would have gone against everything that god is teaching me in this season and maybe let me be honest about what that video was the video was me declaring that i'm going back to corporates in all truth the video was recorded in may it was may right recorded the video way back in may but something in me just wouldn't release it i just was not comfortable with releasing it so not because of the nature of the video but because i really just felt like it's not the video to release because it's not the direction that god wants to take me and i'm giving you this context because i have been having a bit of a tussle with god i've been having a bit of a fight with him and the biggest question of my contention has been did i hear you wrong did i hear you wrong all those years back when you told me that this is my purpose was i mistaken should i have left should i go back all of those questions and i am so glad that god enabled me to go to the agenda woman conference or summit two weeks back because he needed me to hear every message that was in this room because every message was an answer to the question that i was asking and the question being did i hear you wrong was i wrong to make that decision believing that this is the direction that you've taken me and so i'm so grateful to unum deni for having invited me as her guest to to go to the summit and i'm going to be sharing a lot of the epiphanies and a lot of the ahas that came to me as all can okay, maybe not all but as the panelists and the keynotes were were being offered at the summit and so if you want to hear what god's answer was to me because like based on the fight we've been having and really everything that went on at a gender women summit and my reflection on it based on my story stick around because this is a video you don't want to miss <laughs> All right. So, I'm not going to talk about the keynote address that Unum Deni gave, and not because it wasn't outstanding. Yo. Firstly, okay. Let me actually talk about Unum Deni. I have never in all my years of listening to moderators, of listening to keynotes, experienced someone who thinks so deeply and so intently about things. Unum Deni looks at looks at an idea or looks at a story or a concept with eyes that I don't believe the rest of us have what she has put together in a gender woman is something of a marvel the energy in the space the the level and depth of conversations that she has with the people even the conversations that she curates for other people to have it is absolutely outstanding if you've never gone to a gender woman please make it a point to go in 2025 in 2026 in 2027 and for however long god grants nomdeni the grace to run that summit it's really something of a marvel i attend a lot of events but none come close to agenda women i promise you i'm not guessing her up because she invited me as her guest i'm not just saying this because i'm passing time i mean it in its literal sense i have attended a lot of events but a gender women is the number one event of all time for me where women are concerned it's normally run during women's month in south africa and on the last weekend of women's month so please be there the theme for this year was let me check quickly dream big live boldly and i have to say with me contemplating going back to corporate i was in effect dimming or making my dream smaller and i'll talk about it as i go on to reflect on the segments that were had but in all honesty i was saying to god ugh, okay i was saying to god i i don't want to do this anymore and he said to me okay what's the alternative and i was like the alternative is ease obviously let me go back to corporate i just don't want to do this anymore and You know when you're having a conversation with someone of course I can't see God physically right but you know when you're having a conversation with someone and they're staring at you because they want you to continue speaking because they know that 
you know the answer to what you're saying and that's how i felt the interaction with god was right like okay but then i understood that that ease would be ease that is powered by disobedience and i know a lot of the times when you think about disobedience we think about it as something that is in contravention to god's law as in the ten commandments or whatever else god says in the bible but disobedience really is living outside of god's will and i'm not saying that everybody who's in corporates is living against god's will i'm talking about me right the journey i would have taken going back to corporates would be because i'm like ah lord (laughs) if you want to do this do it through somebody else not me and repeatedly last week god's been saying to me you can you can this thing that i've put in your mind this thing that i've given you a vision about you can actually execute it you know there's a sec there's a section where or there was a, a talk where uchipo said god is the chief innovative officer of the world and so if he is the innovator and he's made us and he's made us in his image and after his likeness trust that there's a possibility and not just a possibility but an enabling an ability a capacity he's put in each of us to actually do the things that he's put in our minds to do and so when she said dream big and live boldly i was like the direction i want to take does not require any bold living i mean i've got the competence i've got the qualification i've got the experience i can just but that for me was a charge to say no keep dreaming big and don't let anything dim that that dream but also live boldly and if the life you're currently living does not require you to be bold i want you to think about it properly think about your life and if it's really not requiring you to be bold in any way yeah let me leave it there so the first panel she had was a keynote conversation with Ula Duma and her and his sister, rather his sister Ulihe. And in this conversation, three things came up, right? The first thing was that what makes them stand apart is their brand DNA. And it got me thinking about what my brand DNA was. And I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but I started seeing my business fall apart or like get crooked when I started removing the God elements in my messaging. And even in, in, in the work that I was doing, right? So I thought in my mind, I want my work to attract corporates and I want people to, this is about careers. It's not about anything else. But when I started not mentioning God, when I started not basing my, my, my learnings or my lessons from the word of God, things started falling apart. And then I understood that my DNA is God. My DNA is God's word. And so anything that happens outside of that DNA, of course, will cause for everything that I do to fall apart. So even as you're building your personal brand, your professional brand, whether this is in corporate or in your own entrepreneurial endeavors, what is your brand DNA? Because once you stay true to that and it anchors you, you will continue to achieve success. But you will start really losing the plot when you lose that DNA. And he was sharing, Ola Duma was sharing so many stories, sorry, that he calls miracle moments. And I was just there sitting and thinking, have I experienced any miracle moments on my career journey? And I think there have been, right? And I just, if there's a prayer that I wanted to make, it's really thinking about, about putting ourselves in a position where you can experience miracle moments because I think they're very affirming. They are very sweet from God. They allow us to they allow us to really get confirmation and like that nod with you on the right track when those miracle moments happen. Hey, and then the one thing he said, this is the last thing he said as he was signing off. He said, if there's one thing you do for yourself, entertain the impossible idea. He just said, entertain the impossible idea. And that for me was so moving and touching because, and I was sharing this on Instagram when I was reflecting on, on agenda women and really thanking Unumdeni for not giving up on this vision and on this mission that she's on, even when everything against everything around her is against her, even when it feels like it's her purpose that's pushing back for her to continue pushing forward is that 
it's so it's so difficult to present to a world a vision that God has given you in your secret place. You know, when you envision a world a certain way, a way that is different to what it currently operates is currently operating at now, it's very, very difficult to then say, guys, this is this is the dream, this is the vision, this is the this is how we need to move. And so he said, entertain the impossible idea, the thing you don't believe you can do, the thing that is above your pay grade to do, the thing that the thing that just doesn't make sense for someone like you to do in the way that you're doing it. Entertain that idea and go for that idea. And I was chatting now to my videographer around why I think, and apart from the things that they shared, but what I think what I think really sets apart certain entrepreneurs and certain businesses, right? And I think the key is having the right business model. Guys, I know we want to be noble people who do charitable work, even if that work is supposed to give us a profit. We are people who, especially where, where the topic of purpose is concerned, when you start mentioning amounts and people just, they, they get a, Ibi's one, they short circuits, right? They, be, they get they get a bit of a fire tripping in their brain because they just can't seem to, 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 to marry the two. But they chose a business model that works for them. For them to sell socks at 3,000 rand and a dress at 16,000 rand, they mean business. They have, uh, they have a print that they use. They have a brand that they've built. And the fact that they can confidently sell a dress for 16,000 rand and not flinch, if you can't afford, don't go and buy. And don't go and bash either. But they know that uh, we have a market who is willing to buy this and who's willing to pay for it. And that's who they went for. And I just I think I want to encourage those, especially like me, who are in entrepreneurship, to go with the business model that makes sense. Go with the business model that makes sense. If you want to be selling ebooks for 149 rand, but you want to be a millionaire, think about your your decisions and so that's the thing that i really want to to highlight even as i move forward to the next segments is that think about a model that will be sustainable for the kind of thing you want to run because that can be the difference between you believing entrepreneurship is a scam and you actually seeing the full benefits on, of entrepreneurship if your model doesn't work and you want to judge the vehicle of entrepreneurship based on your incorrect model you you're not fair so go for a model that works okay the next one i think i have a lot of notes around this one but it was a panel with the aw brand and co people or some of the some of the entrepreneurs that sold at the concept store that agenda women had opened in december last year at mall of africa and this was the work smart panel it had wenzi who is the founder of Bona by Wenzi, the sunglasses brand. It had Magori, who is the founder of Nala Sleepwear. It had Kinelwe, who is a co-founder of Namel. In fact, so Kinelwe came late to the event. And then when she came in, they were like, oh, we excuse her for coming late because she's actually showing some of her pieces at New York Fashion Week. And we were like, ooh. See, this is the thing with being in a room like that. It exposes you to what is possible. And this piggybacks so nicely on what U Laduma was saying about entertaining the impossible idea. Being in a room of people who are doing really well for themselves, of people who are doing the impossible, makes you look at yourself, or makes you look at them rather, and see yourself, you know, like Uzozi was saying, seeing yourself reflected. And you, 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 you really sit there and you think, why can't I? Why won't I? What makes them special and me so odd that that kind of miracle, that kind of dream cannot be possible for me? And so hearing that she's doing all these amazing things and her business is running really well, it was so affirming to everyone in the room to say, even those big dreams, those bold ideas, they are worthy of a pursuit because look at how it's working out for somebody else. All right. And the last person on the panel was Linda, who is the founder of Suki Suki Naturals. And here are the things that I got from there. When Unomdeni starts at the panel, she said, entrepreneurship is a wild, wild ride. And I said, they like, oh, I feel so seen because what is this ride that i'm on what is going on 
But more than entrepreneurship being a wild ride, you know what's even wilder? Saying yes to your purpose and actually carrying out what that purpose requires. That is an even an even wi- wilder ride. And she asked them, Guti, guys, with entrepreneurship being so wild, why did you decide to go for it? And the responses were so great. You know, people saying, I just knew that this is something that I needed to pursue. Nothing else was fulfilling for me. And these are themes that I hear even from my own clients, right? So like, I'm not fulfilled. I feel like the work I'm doing is meaningless. I'm not being as impactful as I want. I feel underutilized. My dreams and my skills are not really finding expression here and things like that. And that was the reason that they gave. But there was something... There was something that Wenzi said that got me thinking. And I want you to think about it as well. And in the comment section, tell me your thoughts and your ideas around this. She said that from the very beginning of her of her selling the sunglasses, there was success after success after success. And people were buying and it was really catching, catching momentum, right? And I sat there thinking, is 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 an indicator of 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 god's confirmation of something success and success as we measure it right the fact that you are getting all these deals or you're getting all these clients or you're making all this money is that how we know that that thing has been breathed upon by god and i don't know if i'm articulating myself i don't even i don't even know if i'm articulating myself well but when you are not experiencing success in a thing does that mean god is not in it and I really want you to think about it. I really want you to think about it because this then this then discourages people who are in the beginning phases of building, right? Because it doesn't look like what you had in your in your vision or what you saw. It doesn't look like what you know it can be because you're building, because you're new, because they are growing pains, right? Because you're starting out, because you're being pruned, because this is the start of something big that God is trying to work in you. So if you're not experiencing success as you know success to be, does it mean that it's not from God? Does it mean that it is not of God? Please just think about it and tell me your thoughts in the comment section. I heard there's a man called Myron Golden here on YouTube. He's a very successful business coach. And he says, the work is always working or something is always, the thing is always working. If it's not working for you, it's working on you. And when Wednesday said that, that's literally the thought that came to my mind that sometimes we will disqualify a thing that does not seem to be working for us, not realizing that in disqualifying that thing or disqualifying ourselves from that thing, we are essentially disqualifying ourselves from being worked on or having worked done on us as a result of this thing. So yeah, really think about it. Really think about it when you're wondering, God, is this from you? I don't want you to think that the only way you will know is if there are these serendipitous things that happen, that someone gives you a prophetic word or because your things are flying off the shelf. Sometimes God can communicate in stillness and in silence because that thing may not be working for you, but it's working on you. So yeah, that's something that I, that was just on my mind. The other thing that I wanted to say is that what I noticed from all of the ladies that were speaking on this panel is, was a theme of boldness. All of them were saying, this thing requires you to be bold. And as they were saying this, here's a thought that came to mind. You know, when people say, if your dream doesn't scare you, if your vision doesn't scare you, it's not big enough. Or if it doesn't scare you, then it's, it doesn't require God. Because if it's, if it's easy for you to manage, if it's in the size of your capacity and capability, then it can't be from God. I find it very difficult to relate or resonate with that. Because here's the thing with me. Nothing scares me. I dream right now. And tomorrow I'm like, let's go for it. Whether it puts me out there, whether there's a high chance of success, whether it means I'm tapping into my highest risk reserves, I don't care because nothing scares me. The default for me is ambitious. It's crazy. It's big. So when people say, if it doesn't scare you, then no, it doesn't require God or it's not big enough. I'm just like, my dreams are wild. My dreams are crazy. My visions are big. 
they're very ambitious but they don't scare me and maybe it's a maybe it's a testament to my faith i don't know but tell me your 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 bold wild big dream that makes you so scared and so afraid to pursue it in the comment section i'd really like to hear but yeah no the problem with me is nothing scares me and so sometimes i may feel like lord is this even from you because i'm not scared lord where's room for you because i'm not scared i'm just gonna go if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out if it works out great but scared that's not in my that's not in my tapestry oh this thing that they said next Ooh, this one is the one that really shook me to the core so numdeni was saying to them guys talk to me about plan b what was your plan b if this business of yours didn't work out what was your plan b can i tell you what those ladies said none of them had a plan b none of them had a plan b and can i tell you what came out as they were having that that you will know that you're fully surrendered when there is no plan b everyone's also no plan b if this doesn't work out i'll just run to this ask yourself am i really surrendered have i really given this whole thing and this whole idea and this whole vision to god because if you're still thinking of my plan b Maybe there's an issue with your surrender. And you know you're exactly where God wants you to be if he keeps shutting the doors to your plan B. This is also part of the fight I was having with God. I'm just like, I want to go to corporates. I want to go back to corporates. Or I want to do something that makes me feel more comfortable and makes me feel more settled. And God's been shutting door after door after door after door after door. And I'm just like, you can't be serious. And he keeps saying to me, you can. And maybe I'm lying. Maybe I, I do get scared. But no, I'm not scared. I'm just like, Ugh, it's so big. And it's overwhelming. But that's what they were saying. That you know you're not fully surrendered if you're still thinking about plan B. And then Nom Denny said something that is so, so brilliant. And I, it wasn't the first time. I heard her say it and I wrote it in capital letters because she said it very emphatically. She said, insist on the life you want to live. She says a lot of us give up on our dreams and our goals because we are not insistent on the lives we want to live. We don't want those lives strongly enough. We don't want those lives deeply enough. Insist on the life you want to live and do everything you can to see yourself living that life you know it made me really come to terms and really accept the fact that i actually don't want to be sitting behind a desk that's not what i want to do so me wanting to go back to corporate is really just a cop-out it's really just me running away from what i really do want and what i want is to travel the world speaking on big stages I don't want to work with one corporation that is the only corporation that is going to give me money. I want to work with multiple corporations because that gives me the ability to have a resounding impact, right? That is what I want to do. And so when she said, insist on the life you want, I was like, yeah, I can't run away. Because running away will land me back into the life that I don't want to live. The life that I ran away from in the very beginning. And... Another thing was that I was seeing these, um, these opportunities to teach remotely, right? To teach these, and not the Korean jobs, but like to, to be part of a company that runs schools and teaches and the pay is really good. So I was just like, ah, oh, man, I'm great at teaching. I've got the skill, you know, I'll just apply for these things. And I did. And I'm just like, yeah, this is what I want to do. But then... I had to be very honest with myself that I don't just want to teach anything. I want to teach the, mis the message that God has given me to teach. The, me the message that nothing is better than for us to find joy in the work that we do because that is our heritage. You know, the message that aligning your purpose to your profession is really the key to us fully expressing our fullest potential and for us to find fulfillment and be impactful and have sustainable careers. That is what I want to teach. And so when Unomdeni said, insist on the life you want to live, that really got to me to say, I can't just surrender myself to a life that looks almost like what I want, but really isn't what I want because I'm scared or because I don't see the possibility of it coming to pass. And so that's what I want to leave you with as well. Insist on the life you want to live and live that life. Do everything that you can. 
everything that it takes for you to live that life. And the final thing that was said in this chat really, really resonated deeply with me. They said challenges are not a signifier of a bad life. They are a signifier of life. That if you're experiencing challenges, that's telling you that you are alive, you are living, you you have a life and you know this or you know you're alive and there's a pulse. That's the illustration they gave. Sorry, that you, when you look at a monitor, what you find is that pulse, right? Those troughs and peaks that go up and down to signify that there's, there's sinus rhythm, there's breath that's happening, this body is not lifeless. But once it starts to flatline, that's how they know that this person is dead. That is how they know that Darwin, you are no longer with us. And so a lot of us run away from the challenges of life because we think they signify a bad life. But in essence, it's those challenges that are proof to you that there is life, that you are alive. And, you know, I'm even thinking now of the many professionals that come to me saying, oh, Mpumi, my career is like stagnant now i feel like i've hit the ceiling i feel like i've plateaued i'm no longer fulfilled i don't think this is meaningful for me anymore and essentially what they're talking to me is about a flat line that they're experiencing in their own careers and i want to say to you maybe it's time you you inject yourself with something that's going to give you life and really what i've found to give me so much life is my purpose because when i was back in corporates and i was doing the work that i was doing my career was flatlining if it hadn't already flatlined and it's only because i mean yeah i'm competent yeah i've got the experience but there was no there was no life in what i was doing and if i was running away from that i would have been running away from life itself and so maybe you need to start thinking to yourself am i still alive in that sense and then to go after the thing that will make you come alive however challenging it is whatever obstacles and hurdles it presents that will be proof to you that there is life here not that your life is hard okay